Topic number 11, general issues of acute pyro and surgical infection. Lecture of Shevchenko Alexander, Baltic Federal University Medical Institute, Kaliningrad 2020. Infection. An infection is the invasion of an organism's body tissues by disease-causing agents. Their multiplication and the reaction of host tissues to the infectious agents and the toxins they produce. Surgical infection is an infection which can be treated by surgical methods or surgery. Surgical infections include peritonitis and intra-abdominal infections, surgical site infections, cutaneous tissues infections, and subcutaneous infections or osteomyelitis and osteomyelitis. Cutaneous and subcutaneous infection we will discuss further in the lecture number 13. Classification of surgical infection. Surgical infection is divided into acute and chronic. Acute infection, purient infection, putrid infection, anaerobic infection, specific infection as tetanus, rabies or gas gangrene, and chronic infection, non-specific infection and specific infection, tuberculosis, syphilis, anti-actinomycosis. For pure and surgical diseases, pre several classification are applied. Uh, in the text of this lecture, we will talk about acute infection. According to the etiology of surgical infection, is divided into the following features: bioregion, extracurricular, and uh, hospital acquired. Hospital acquired or nosocomial and extracurricular means uh, people get this infection not in the hospital. Uh, by source of infection, endogenous means infection contains in the body already before some serious uh, signs we see, and exogenous. Exogenous infection mean, means infection get uh, by the patient from the external environment or during the surgery. By type of pathogen, staphylococcal infection, streptococcal infection, pneumococcal infection, colibacillar infection, gonococcal infection, anaerobic non-spore forming infection, clostridial anaerobic infection, and mixed infection. According to the structure of pathology, infection surgical diseases, infectious complications of surgical diseases, postoperative infection complications, and infection complication of closed and open injuries. Uh, first of all, infection surgical diseases. It means uh, we, we have uh, boil or abscess or uh, appendicitis. Complication, uh, infection complication of surgical diseases. It is uh, like acute peritonitis after acute appendicitis. Postoperative infection complications. It means surgical wound infections. And infection complication of closed and open injuries. Uh, sometimes uh, wound uh, which not made into the operating theater is uh, contaminated or even uh, infected, so we have infection complication of the wound. Sometimes if we have uh, closed injury uh, as a hematoma, but skin doesn't rupture, some endogenous infection go to this site of hematoma and this is good environment uh, for the growth of pathological uh, bacteria and with time this hematoma be become purulent. By prevalence, uh, infection can be local or overall. Overall infection can be several uh, foci in the body or overall infection as sepsis present. We discuss sepsis in uh, another lecture. It will be further. Efrichia coli. 
is a pathogen of the pure and inflammatory diseases of the abdominal cavity. Appendicitis, cholecystitis, peritonitis, abscesses, etc. Soft tissue after operation with opening the lumen of whole organs lead to sepsis. Lives in the intestines, it can exist in aerobic and anaerobic conditions. Causes putrefactive tissue breakdown, characterized by severe intoxication, resistant to antibacterial drugs. Frequently emitting, it is associated with Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. Staphylococcal infection. A large number of infections encountered in surgical practice are caused by Staphylococcus aureus. It is an important pathogen in postoperative wound infection and in infection for wound penetrating wounds. The lesions produced by Staphylococcus aureus are characteristically localized with an indurated area of cellulitis that undergoes central necrosis and abscesses formation with a thick, creamy, odorless and yellow or cream colorless pus. Bacteremia may occur with the development metastatic abscesses. Fever and leukocytosis are usually present. Antibiotic resistant bacteria are increased virulence often caused those infections acquired during the course of hospitalization. Recent studies have shown the emergence of new bacteriophage type Staphylococcus aureus may occur spontaneously. Streptococcal infection A variety of streptococcal organisms produce infections in a surgical practice. The most frequent of these is Streptococcus pyogenes, all the others as Streptococcus viridans, Peptostreptococcus, aerobic Streptococcus and Streptococcus fecalis may be encountered. The lesion caused by Streptococcus pyogenes and characteristically in vessel with a rapid course. Full blown infections are often seen within 12 to 24 hours after the time of contamination, but may occur as late as one or two weeks. The infections are char characterized by diffuse cellulitis, lymphangitis, lymphadenitis, and extension of the inflammation along facial planes. Thin, watery pus may develop, but frank abscess formation rarely occurs. Several specific diseases syndromes are related to streptococcal infections. Among these is erysipelas, which is the most often produced by the hemolytic streptococci. It is usually occurs in the epifacial tissues and skin, although it may develop at other sites of trauma or surgical incisions. After an incubation period of one to three days, fever chills, rapid pulse, and severe toxemia develop, associated with a spreading superficial cellulitis that has a characteristic appearance with an indurated, raised, and irregular margin. These infections are often self-limited and improvement is seen within a period of 4 to 8 days. Acute recurrent lymphangitis may also result from infection with Streptococcus pyogenes, which usually has its portal of entry through small cracks in the skin. Infection caused by gram-negative bacilli. A variety of gram-negative bacteria indigenous to the Genitourinary and gastrointestinal tracts of humans may cause surgical infection. Wound infection by this organism usually results from operative contamination of uh, spewed gastrointestinal content and may be related to improper surgical technique. In other instances of wound infection or invasive systemic infection, these organisms uh, also uh, acts as opportunistic invaders and most frequently cause infection where there is an impairment of the host defense mechanisms. As previously discussed, they are frequent pathogens when there, was, then when there has been bacterial contamination from exogenous sources, often in completely removed devitalized tissue, in burns, and in infections associated with perforations of the gastrointestinal or genitourinary tract. Gram-negative infections are often polymicrobic 
with both anaerobic and aerobic organisms, but are often not recognized as such because anaerobic cultures are infrequently done on a routine basis in clinical practice. Postoperative wound infection caused by enteric bacilli usually have a longer incubation period than those caused by Staphylococcus or Streptococcus. Anaerobic spore forming bacteria or Clostridium vegetate in the, in the intestines of animals, humans, and very widely disturbed in the external environment. For growth and reproduction are necessary strictly anaerobic conditions. It is characterized by high patho pathogenicity. They are the causative agent of a specific infection process, gas how of gangrene. The same group includes tetanus, cause this specific infection disease tetanus. It also acti uh, activates in the intestines of animals and humans. In the soil it is used for a long time in the form of spores. Pathogenesis Despite the variety of surgical infection diseases, they have a lot in common. In particular, pathogenesis is defined by three main elements. First, type of pathogen, it is properties. Second, entrance gates, the place where the pathogen enters the body. Three, reaction of the microorganism to the penetration of the pathogen. Properties of the pathogen. Ability to cause infection, the process is determined by the pathogenicity or virulence of the microorganism. It is determined by the ability to produce enzymatic, toxic, antiphagocytic substances that destroy tissues, reducing local tissue protection of the body. Virulence it is estimated by the minimum dose of microbial bodies capable of causing infection processes. Therefore, the more it is, the less you need microorganism in order to cause it. Uh, we have two definition invasiveness ability of the microorganism overcome protective barriers and spread in tissues and toxicity its ability to uh, of pathogens to produce toxins that damage tissues we have two main types of toxins exotoxin which means uh, cell produce toxin and push it away from the body of, this, of the you know, body of the bacteria and then the toxin so bacteria have in the in in its own structure toxins and when it die uh, and the toxin go throughout the body uh, why it is important for the surgeon because we have two main types of antibiotic and uh, antibiotics first type and is bactericidal and the second type is uh, uh, bacteriostatic uh, when we deal with uh, bacteria which produce exotoxin we must, we must use um, bactericidal when we uh, deal with bacteria which produce uh, endotoxin, we must use bacteria static. You can ask why, uh, and I'm answer uh, if you kill too much bacteria at one time, if you use bactericidal antibiotic, so intoxication of this patient will be high, and maybe it can lead even to death as in causes diphtheria. Entrance gate. The first link in the pathogenesis of the infection process is penetration of the pathogen into the tissues. It can be exogenous or endogenous. In the first case, the pathogen enters from the environment, the second microorganism already in the body. But in the other anatomical entities, for example in the lumen, or a whole organ. Place a, an, a place of implementation microorganism are called the entrance gate of infection, and the developing inflammatory process is called the primary focus of infection. 
Under normal conditions, the skin and mucous membranes are a barrier for pathogens. If only if uh, their integrity is damaged or violation of local protective mechanisms creates conditions for penetration of microorganisms. The entrance gate can be ducts of sweat and sebaceous gland, memory glands. Microorganisms also penetrate through small violation of the integrity of the enter integumentary tissues, microtrauma. When they hit them, they hit intercellular spaces and lymphatic vessels can penetrate deep lying tissues. The penetration of pathogens does not always cause an infection process, since they in most cases die as a result of the impact of the protective mechanism of the microorganisms. Protection mechanism General protective reactions and are determined by non-specific reactivity and the state of specific defense mechanisms. Immunity General non-specific reactivity depends on the individual stability of the body, heredity, saturation, food management, vitamin balance status, individual predisposition of the resistance of the body, determines the nature of the developing infections process. Lack of tissues in nutrients, vitamins make the body more susceptible to the emergence of an infection process. Specific protection mechanisms, specific reactivities based on the ability of the microorganism to produce antibacterial substances that protect it from invasion of pathogens. Immune defense reactions are provided by the production of antibodies, humoral and cellular types and complement system. Factors favoring the reduction of protective reactions. Gender. Women are more uh, uh, less susceptible for um, the infection agents, uh, superative infectious agents. Age. Children and adolescents are more likely to suffer from infectious diseases uh, than elderly people. Uh, up to three six months of immune responses are provided mothers of antibodies. In old age, the immune system is essential decline. So people in the early age and uh, elderly uh, is more susceptible for infection. And people in shock, which have hypovolemia, blood loss, insufficiency of tissue perfusion, microcirculation disorders, tissue hypoxia, hypoproteinemia favors the development of a severe infection process. Diseases of cardiovascular system as a result of circulatory disorders is difficult to deliver cellular and humoral structures that provide a protective function, which is contribute to the weighting of the infection process, diabetes due to hyperglycemia, an inflammatory reaction it may decrease, which makes the infection process heavier. In addition, diabetes has local circulatory disorders, also creating favorable conditions for infections. Uh, here we see common type of uh, infection. Um, this picture is depicts uh, all studies, uh, all uh, periods of pathogenic. Um, Process first is exposure to the pathogenic agent. Then some bo uh, some uh, cell is damaged by adhesion and invasion of the pathogenic agent. Then these uh, cells is um, produce uh, its own toxic agents or during uh, Uh, during production of exogenic toxins or during the uh, life of the cell. And then if it uh, endogenous, uh, endogenic toxins in this uh, cell, when it die, it, may, it, uh, pro 
it produces toxicity and toxicity produces tissue damage and um, cell death of the microorganism. The course of the infection process is divided into three periods incubation, peak of the disease, and uh, convalescence or reconvalescence. It means recovery. Incubation period. Penetration of pathogens into tissues. It is the starting point of the infection process, but its clinical manifestations will appear after some time. For development, microorganisms in tissues require a period during which they adapt to the new environment. Its duration depends on the characteristics of the pathogen, the state of the microorganism and varies from several hours to several days. On average, in, it is 5 to 6 hours. The time from the penetration of the pathogen to the appearance of clinical manifestations is called the incubation period. Peak of the disease At the end of the incubation period, the pathological process manifests itself in its characteristic clinical picture. It is at this time that pathogens fully manifest themselves properties of the pathogen and protective reaction of the body. Aggregate, they determine the nature of pathological disorders and clinical manifestations. Period of uh, convalescence. As a result of the treatment, activation of protective reactions comes suppression of activity pathogens. Active infection process subsides, body implementates the consequences and damage caused by the disease. Damaged tissues heal and recover functions of organs. This time is the period of reconvalescence or convalescence. Clinical features. In all case of um, local inflammation, there are specific signs. The patients feel ill, the degree depending upon the size of the pathological process, the virulence of the organism, micro, uh, um, microorganism, and tension within the cavity. The temperature is elevated, in severe cases, a rigorous may occur. Uh, five classical local signs of inflammation are Heat the inflamed area feels warmer than the surrounding tissues. Redness of the skin over the inflamed area. Tenderness due to the pressure of exudates of the surrounding nerves. Swelling and loss of function. And the inflamed tissue does not perform possible its physiological function. So cardinal signs of inflammation. Pain, heat, redness, swelling and loss of function. Local with overall infection. The infection process may be limited, localized only in the place of introduction of pathogens. In that case, it's called a local infection. If the infection progress mm, involving the surrounding tissues in the pathological process, it is said to be an invasive form. In addition, pathogen can be transferred to other areas of the body, leading to the development of secondary forces, and then sepsis. It is customary to distinguish the following ways of spreading of infection. Uh, uh, lymphogenic, hematogenic, uh, by, uh, uh, by the um, uh, by the fascia. Uh, by length or by the fascia. The purulent process spreads through the intermuscular spaces, facial vaginas. Intracavity. Distribution uh, the infection process occurs through the lumen of the cavities. Lymphogenic. Pathogens are carried through the lymphatic vessels. Hematogenous. Pathogens break into the general bloodstream and with blood falls it carried to various organs and tissues. Specific surgical infections. Tetanus, rabies, and gas green, gangrene. Diagnostics. Uh, we have not so many instruments to diagnose some uh, superative infection. 
we uh, have specific local signs pain, tenderness, redness, uh, loss of function. We have special general condition uh, as an elevation of the temperature, uh, symptoms of signs of toxicity. Uh, we can use ultrasound for cutaneous and subcutaneous um, superative infection. CT scan if it uh, placed in the body cavities. We have elevated white blood counts and elevated sedimentation rate. Treatment. Non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, antibiotics, antiseptics, infusion therapy and surgery. And that's all. It's very easy. Uh, insights, antibiotics, antiseptics, infusion therapy and surgery. As a quick recap, we have beta-lactam antibiotics, penicillins, cephalosporins, monobactams and carbapenems. And we have aminoglycosides, tetracyclines, macrolides, polymyxins, rifampicins, polyens, lincozamide, uh, glycopeptide and horamphenicol. Surgical treatment. Surgical treatment plays a leading role in the complex of treating treatment measures for surgical infection diseases. The indication for surgical intervention is the site transition process in the pure and necrotic stage. Unjustified delay of refusal to operate is dangerous and leads to the most serious consequences. The spread of the process to the surrounding tissues, generalization of infection, which can lead to a fatal outcome. Therefore, surgical interventions are performed in an emergency order. Surgery. The main purpose of surgery is empty and purulent cavity to reduce the possibility of spreading pathogens and toxins in the body. Surgical intervention allows you to eliminate the purulent focus, restrict the distribution area of the process to reduce the intoxication and reduction and reuse of the intoxication of the body. Uh, type of uh, procedures we can use in purine surgery. There are radical and palliative uh, surgical interventions. Radical purine necrotic focus is removed completely, and palliative evacuate purine exudate and create waste for its outflow. In such cases, the focus remains in the tissues, but it turns out to be a new condition that creates possibilities for the elimination of the pathological process. Radical surgery. There are the following types of radical operation for purulent diseases. Radical excision, organ removal, organ resection and amputation. Excision. Of the purine focus is carried out within healthy areas fabrics. It can be used for localization of the infection process in soft tissues. Mandatory conditions for the implementation of such interventions are clear delineation of the abscess, localization away from important anatomical structures, nerves, blood vessels, and joints, for example. And specific uh, surgical infection as tetanus. Tendonosis is bacterial infection characterized by muscle spasm. It's a very famous uh, painting of uh, general tetanus. Uh, tetanus is caused by an infection with the bacterium Clostridium tetani, which commonly found in soil. Tetanus can be prevented uh, by immunization with the tetanus vaccine. Uh, clinical signs. Tetanus often uh, begins with mild spasm in the jaw muscles, also known as lockjaw or trismus, as we see at, the, at this photo. In this photo, sorry. The spasm can also affect the facial muscles, resulting in an appearance called rhesus sardonicus, chest, neck, uh, back abdominal muscles, and buttocks may be affected. Uh, Back muscle spasm often cause arching called opistotonus, as we see here on the picture painting. Sorry. 
Sometimes the spasm affects muscles that help with breathing, which can lead to breathing problems and then to death. Another surgical uh, specific infection is rabies. Rabies is fatal but preventable viral disease. It can spread by uh, to people and pets if they are bitten by scratched or scratched by a rabid animal, as a fox, bat, uh, squunz or uh, raccoon. After a bite or other rabies exposure, the rabies virus have to travel through the body to the brain before it can cause symptoms. As the disease progresses, the person may experience delirium, abnormal behavior, hallucination, hydrophobia, and insomnia. Uh, it's plan of World Health uh, Organization to prevent rabies in the world. Uh, it can be preventable by the vaccination of the people, and um, it can we can uh, make emergency vaccination if people will bite, uh, and immediately we can vaccinate the people. Uh, people must understand how to interact with wild animals, and. Um, you must understand, in case of uh, contaminated wound by the soil we, or any rupture of the skin, we must make vaccination against tetanus. And if uh, people were bitten by any animal, cat, dog, uh, it, it not obviously must be uh, some wild animal. We must use emergency vaccination from rabies. And gas gangrene. It's bacterial infection, then produ produces tissue gas and gangrene. It spreads rapidly and it can lead to death. We have uh, uh, we can see a rapid intoxication when we palpate uh, some tissue which um, involved in the gas burning process, we can hear the crepitus or um, sound which occurs when somebody walks on the snow. It, it means crepitus. Uh, because it spreads very rapidly, uh, one course of uh, treatment, it's amputation of the uh, affected limb. And this is um, Clostridium perfringens on the microscope, uh, in the microscope view. And thank you for, uh, for your attention. We will talk about uh, more surgical infection, uh, about specific uh, skin and subcutaneous infection in the next lecture, in the 13th lecture, and uh, we talk about sepsis in the further lectures too. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you knew something new from this video. Bye-bye!